Uh, we've been doing this for 11 years and um, we're just excited we can do it in the virtual world now as well. All right, so to get started, what I'd love for all of you to do is find that chat box. Find that on your screen. It, if you're on your desktop or your laptop, it would be on the bottom of the screen. Click the chat icon. And then oh, it'll open up your chat box. If you're on your phone, there's usually like three dots bottom right. Um, every phone is a little bit different, but open that up and there'll be a chat box. In the chat, I wanna hear from you. Tell us all on the line where you're calling in from, what kind of industry or job you're looking for. And we would love, love, love to have your Zoom or your LinkedIn link URL dropped in there. Thank you, uh, Carl. We appreciate you, Carl Forkner. He is a research psychologist in Mesa and he dropped his clickable LinkedIn URL into the chat box. They need to be clickable because we, due to security reasons, we don't allow copying and pasting of the Zoom or of the Zoom chat. And so it needs to be blue. And the way you do that is just open up a browser on your computer, go to LinkedIn. And when you log in, if you just click on your picture, go to your profile page, just usually if you just click on your picture, it'll take you right there. And make sure it has that HTTPS colon backslash backslash and that will get you the clickable URL. Just copy the URL that's, that you click into when you click on your picture and put, paste it right here. So welcome Sharon and Bonnie and Ted. We're so excited to have you guys here today. All right. Um, I'm going to, uh, let's see, drop it over to Sheila for a second. She's the backbone to our events and runs all the technology side. So Sheila, you want to take it for just a minute? Sure. Hey, good morning. I'm so glad to see everybody. And if you can turn your video on, we love to see your smiles in the morning. Be brave, turn your video on. <laughs> I want to let you know toward the end of the event, I'll do some polling and it'll pop a window up in the middle of your screen. If you'll just answer the question, there's only four, the window will go away. So you'll be able to see the slides again. Uh, Jessica already talked about the chat. That's a great place. If you have questions during uh, the event, you can ask and connect with other people while you're here. You can also control how you see things in Zoom. I think it's kind of getting old hat, but just a reminder, you can move around the videos, you can change if the presentation is full screen, not full screen, so that you can have the chat where you want it. So you can play with how things are displayed. The other thing I wanna tell you is we are so excited to be able to offer closed captioning. Uh, we're able to link into a professional closed captioner service. And so if you are in need of that, you can use uh, your phone and snap the um, QR code right there, or you can enter this um, this bit.ly link in a browser window and there's the event ID and I'll drop those in the chat as soon as I'm done talking, but that'll open in another browser window and you can follow along with the script of what we're saying. So have a good morning. Glad you're here. Thanks, Sheila. Uh, and I just want to reiterate that not only are we connecting with, with you that drop in your LinkedIn profile, but I encourage you all to connect with each other. And so right now we're not doing live events and that is where we would always spend time getting to know some people in the room and kind of getting you a little bit outside of your comfort zone by going and talking to somebody, but can't, we can't do that here. So I encourage you to connect with somebody through LinkedIn, but also send them a message, say hi, ask what kind of job they're looking for. Um, if you see somebody in here that you either know or is in the same industry as you, connect with them, ask them some questions, do your best to engage because one of the things we know, we are 100% certain of, and the data is there to prove it is many, many jobs are landed through somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. Now, it makes it a little bit harder when we're living in the virtual world, essentially, but it still works. And so make a friend, talk to a couple people offline that are in this meeting today. Um, go, go have coffee, uh, I guess a, ver a COVID safe coffee with somebody outside um, somewhere, but connect with people offline because 
this is what it's about connecting with people and that's why we're trying to provide this space for you guys all right let's see so our agenda today we are so excited to have um carmen here today interviewing with confidence uh, carmen Payne will be talking for our keynote today then you'll hear from three hiring companies hacienda healthcare cable one also known as sparklight and freedom financial network and then at the end of that time, end of our speakers, we will have some time for you guys to jump into different breakout rooms. And what those breakout rooms allow is um, some one-on-one -on -one engagement or small group engagement with resume writers, LinkedIn coaches, career coaches, finance, co finance coach, and more. And so hang on to the end. Uh, I actually personally had a lot of email come in this week, people saying, hey, I need some help on my resume. What would you suggest? Can you look at my resume? And to be honest, I'm not the best person out there to look at a resume. I might be able to help connect you to somebody, but what we've done is we've gone out and got the experts in their area and we've brought them here and we've asked them to volunteer and serve their time and serve time and they do and they provide the resources right here and so that will be at the end of the call uh, we would love for you to um, talk to them at the end of the call today all right so to get this party started we are going to introduce uh, carmen Payne. she is a personal and professional development coach she works with business and corporate professionals to develop your leadership skills and increase your self-awareness in order to help you create an even better personal and professional life fit. Carmen's services include professional, personalized coaching, workshops, consulting, and speaking. And during her corporate career, both in the UK and the US, Carmen traveled the world leading international IT projects, including developing, testing, training, and deploying global solutions with large international teams and partnering with Fortune 500 companies. Carmen retains her project management professional accreditation. Some of you on the line may have that, the PMP, and obtained her coaching certifications at the South, Southwest Institute of Healing Arts and with the Quantum Success Coaching Academy. She also holds certifications in neuro-linguistics programming and timeline therapy and is a certified ADD heart facilitator. Carmen, we are so grateful you are here today. Please help me give a virtual wave to Carmen and welcome her to our stage. Hello. She is unmuting, I think, right now. Yes. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. I'm just waiting for my slides to come up. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much, Gina. I appreciate your help. I am so excited to be speaking to this, this audience once again. I think this is my third or fourth time now that I'm speaking for Career Connectors, and I just love what this community is doing in the world. And it's always such an honor and a pleasure to be speaking for you, Jessica, as well. So thank you so much for inviting me back. So this is kind of a little twist on what I usually present because we are still in virtual worlds, right? With COVID still being around and everything like that. So I've updated this presentation to include additional tips and tricks on how to present yourself really well on video as well. So you really feel confident when you are Zooming with somebody or on, on whatever platform they're using to do a virtual interview with you, okay? So we're gonna, I'll go through the content with you right now. So before I even get into all of that, I just want to kind of give you a bit of a reminder that, you know, ask yourself this question, who is driving my career bus? Okay, who's in the driver's seat? Is this you? Are you sitting in the passenger seat waiting for something to fall on your lap? Or are you actually driving the bus, so to speak? Right. So you need to think about where are you when you really look at your career and what you're doing for yourself right now as a job seeker? Where are you? Are you in the passenger seat or in the driver's seat? And if you're not in the if you're not in the driver's seat, you need to move to the driver's seat. That is the only way that you are going to create successful opportunities for yourself. OK, so I was listening to a podcast a little while ago and I really loved what this person had to say. Her name's Naomi Capelli. 
And she said, your career is an investment and you need to treat it that way. So the fact that you actually got up this morning, registered for this event, well, before even getting here, right? The fact that you got up, you're here, you're showing up is fantastic because this is a really wonderful opportunity for you to invest in your career and where you're going, right? So the, attend all the Career Connectors events, even when you have a job, still attend because there's so much wisdom from all the speakers that they bring in. So this is a really good community to stay connected with, even when you're successfully employed. Okay, so when you're thinking about your career, you know, now is a perfect time, right, to think about, okay, where am I going in my career? So one of the ways to do that is to reflect on the last 12 months. What were your successes and failures or things that you could have done differently? What did you learn from the last 12 months, right? So do that reflection. And then number two is plan slow to move fast. And I know that sounds a little bit counterintuitive because we live, you know, we're constantly in a rush and we're hurried and we need to do things now, now, now. We want that instant gratification. But if you set aside some time in your week to just sit and plan for a couple of hours, maybe two to four hours about where you're going in your career, what is it you want to manifest for yourself? What do you want to bring in? What opportunities do you want to create? Who do you want to connect with to expand your, your network? Just Spend that time to do that introspection, right? To get some really good solid action plans in place so that you can then execute. That's when you when you can move into action mode, right? And as soon as you've done your plan, step three is literally act, execute the plan, right? Act now. So I just wanted to share that with you. So in essence, I want you to put in the chat, what's an interview? When you think about an interview, what is it? Put it in the chat for me. And I'm reading the chat. This is an interactive presentation, everybody. So please put some stuff in the chat. When you think about an interview, what is it in its essence? <laughs> Fighting the ocean say scary, too funny. First back and forth conversation, a blind date, excellent to sell yourself, conversation to sell, excellent. A chance to get to know the company and introduce yourself, fantastic. A conversation to understand each other, excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah, it literally, literally is like a date, right? You're getting to know each other. You're telling your story, yep. It's matching, making, matchmaking in the professional world. <laughs> this thing will be a good fit, an opportunity to have a company. These are excellent answers. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. Investigation of job, two-way conversation. Fantastic. So you basically really are on the same page, right? So with COVID still being around and I want everybody to be safe, I kind of came up with this pre-interview checklist before you even get to the interview, especially if it's in person, okay? So... When you're um, preparing to go to the interview, ask the person that's asking you to come in in person, what kind of safety procedures do they have in place? What protocols do they have in place? Just so that you're aware of it, you know, do they have hand sanitizer? Um, you know, everywhere now requires a mask when you go in, of course, right? So just ask them, what kind of protocols are they implementing to keep everybody safe, right? Because you may not feel comfortable going in if the if the protocols they're implementing aren't to your risk standards right and then if you are in person obviously remember to bring a mask and wear a mask at your interview bring your own hand sanitizer and then um, if you are meeting in person remember do not shake their hand maybe do the elbow thing right you touch each other's elbow or you do a little bit of a fist pump but remember not to shake each other's hands and then if you're not comfortable, if you have some um, concern about your health, maybe you're, you, you know, you're living with people in the family that may have be at high risk and you are concerned about that, maybe you're not comfortable going to an interview in person and that's perfectly okay. Just ask them, hey, can we do this interview over the phone or virtually? Just see if they'll be open to that idea. A lot of companies these days are definitely open to that. So don't be afraid to ask that question, especially if you're worried about, you know, if you're immune compromised, for example, if you have somebody at home that's living with diabetes, you know, these people are at higher risk. So if you're taking care to make sure that you're minimizing your exposure at this point in time, even with the vaccine that's being rolled out, 
um, ask that question and make sure you're, you're doing the interview to your comfort level, okay? Don't be afraid to ask that question. So let's go to the nuts and bolts of this particular presentation, okay? So what are some of the co common interview questions that you find tricky or challenging or uncomfortable to answer? Pop them in the chat for me. I'm just waiting for the chat to catch up, I think. So pop in the chat any questions that you find, yeah, explaining a gap, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about yourself, like what does that mean? That's an excellent question. My whole life or last year, why are you leaving your job? Okay, what are your salary expectations? So many different kinds of questions. Behavioral situation questions, gonna cover that today. What are your weaknesses? Yep, worst project. <laughs> uh, tell me a time when you dealt with the conflict, awesome. What are your strengths and weaknesses? Fantastic. So I'm gonna cover um, tools and tricks to help you answer that strengths and weakness question and behavioral questions. And when it comes to gaps, you know, many of us have been furloughed, right? In the last, in the last year. So having a gap on your resume isn't going to be that uncommon and you're just going to stick to the facts, right? What were you doing during that gap? Um, and I'm looking at the chat. So if I look like I'm looking to the side, it's because I'm reading the chat. Um, so, you know, when you're answering that gap question, what were you doing? Were you getting some education? Were you taking some online classes? Were you taking care of your family? Just be truthful, right? Maybe you were furloughed uh, like so many people were. And if that was your situation, just share that, right? So um, just be honest about the gap. You know, maybe you were raising your children during that time or homeschooling your kids. There's so many reasons why you could have had that gap in your resume. And um, I think, you know, my sense is that employers are more sensitive to that now and they're not seeing it as such a red flag because of what happened, you know, what's been going on in the last few months for everybody, okay? Um, so let's go and share some tricks and tips with you on how to answer those the strengths and weakness questions and those behavioral questions, okay? So um, I, must have pre I must be psychic because some of, them, some of the things that you put in the chat I have exactly on this slide, right? So what is your strength and weakness? Describe a time when, give or share an example of when, how did you handle X situations that are like a conflict? Um, tell me about your glass current job or ex employer. Okay, so we're going to cover some, some tools on how you can answer those questions. So before I even go there, what's one of the first things that happens in an interview? Put that in the chat. What's the first thing that happens in an interview usually? Introduction. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So First impressions are huge, right? Within the first three to seven seconds, we've pretty much made up our mind about that individual, right? So how you show up in those first few seconds is gonna be crucial to the rest of the, the impression that you leave on that person, all right? So just make sure that you're very calm and that you've been breathing deeply and introduce yourself, okay? So breathe and relax your shoulders because some of us tend to walk around with our shoulders up in our ears, right? So just relax your shoulders, roll them back. That's a really good way to kind of just make sure that your shoulders are in check and not up in your ears, right? And then just with a very, very confident greeting. Good morning, so-and-so. My name is Carmen. Very nice to meet you, right? And obviously, if it's in person, remember, do not shake the hand. <laughs> You're just basically going to have your hands in front of you and you're just going to stand very confidently and greet and introduce yourself, okay? So going on to that question, many of you put it in the chat about how do I answer my weakness question, right? And how do I answer my strengths question? So when you're asked this question in an interview, I would start, if they are, depends on how they ask it. So if they ask it like this, can you tell me your greatest strengths and weaknesses? What are you gonna start with when you answer that question? Put it in the chat. What do you think you should start with? Okay, your strengths, okay. All right, actually, I'm gonna tell you to start with your weaknesses and end on your strengths. Why would I say that? Why do you think I'm saying start with your weakness and end on your strengths? Put that in the chat. 
end on a good note. Exactly. You want to end on the positive, not on the negative, okay? And then when you're talking about your weaknesses, focus on the weaknesses that they could care less about. You've got to be really strategic when you're answering this question, right? You don't want to put all the weaknesses where they're looking for you to have the skills and the, and the techniques and the experience, right? And the education. If there is a weakness that you can link, think of when you're answering that question that they could care less about, maybe they could easily train you on that particular thing, right? Be, then share it, but always end on your strengths so that you're leaving them with a really positive impression of what you can do and what you bring to the table, okay? That's right, because people remember the last better, exactly. All right, so one of the ways that you can start prep, prep, preparing for this question is to do a SWOT analysis. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with a SWOT analysis. It's basically where you break down your strengths or weak, and weaknesses, opportunities and threats. And so when I think about weaknesses, I really don't like that word. I see them more as opportunities for growth or areas for improvement. So what things are you working on to improve or grow in? Think of your weaknesses like that. Now, there are many sources that you can refer to. So for example, you know, how, what feedback have you received from um, in your employers, your, you know, your supervisors or your managers about all your directors, right, that you report to about areas that you could improve on? Pop them in that quadrant, right? What things have you done some introspection on that you think, hey, you know, I could really brush up my skills and knowledge in this area, right? Put that in the opportunities for growth and areas for improvement. And then in your strengths as well, refer to any annual reviews that you've had or employment assessments that you've ever done, had and pop those strengths in. What do your best friends say about you? You know, what, the, what do the people that love you say about you that they think are really wonderful strengths of yours? And pop them in your strengths. So I'm going to ask you all to put in the chat at least one strength that you believe you have. Go. <laughs> Problem solving, excellent Katie. Encouraging, wonderful Jessica. Cynthia says relationship building, adapting to change. Oh my goodness, this is fantastic. Resilience, conversion, critical thinker. Just challenging the status quo, love it. Effective team leader, yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. So I would definitely spend some time before your interview just thinking about what your strengths are and areas of growth and opportunities so that when you ask that question, the strengths and weakness question, you can just answer it straight away. That's because what does that tell an employer or your interviewer about you? What does it tell them about you when, you be, when you're able to answer that question from a sincere place? You're prepared, yes. Anything else? Thank you, Andrea. You're honest, yes. Thank you, Jensen. You're confident, yes. <laughs> yes, you know yourself. Yes, exactly. You're decisive. You've done that introspection, you know. So if you ask the question, I don't know what my weaknesses are or I don't have any weaknesses, do ne never, ever <laughs> answer that question saying I don't have any weaknesses because I'm going to immediately go, yeah, I'm not hiring this person. They've not done their introspection. They're not very self-aware. Their emotional intelligence is really poor, right? I'm just going to instantly go to that place in my brain that you're not doing, you're not putting the self-work in to actually be aware of what your areas of growth are, your areas of opportunities are to grow. Open to share. Awesome. Okay, so on my next slide, you might want to take a screenshot or a print screen of this. Um, these are just questions to kind of get that brain inspired on how to answer the SWOT analysis, right? Things to think about, because I don't know about you, but when I'm given a blank template, sometimes my brain just shuts off and I just get blocked. What I need is usually a nudge of inspiration. So when I, I'm sharing this with you so that you can have some nudges of inspiration and do some, you know, just answer these questions as you're working through this template, okay? So hopefully you've all had a chance to take a screenshot of that. All right, moving on. All right, so let's move on to how we would answer those behavioral questions, right? 
So behavioral questions or cognitive questions usually start with, can you tell me about, give me an example of, how did you handle this situation? Can you describe a time when? Have you ever had? And then can you share a time when or when you, this happened to you or have you had a conflict with anybody, right? So these, when you hear those in the question, you know they're looking for you to come up with some kind of an example, a real life example of that situation so that you can answer the question. Now, what a lot of people get tripped up on is they waffle and they ramble and they take like way too long <laughs> to answer these questions. And you know, you might get a you might get a clue when the interviewer is like looking at their watch or their Fitbit or whatever to see the time, <laughs> right? So, how do you answer these questions in a manner that keeps the interviewer engaged and you on track as well? Okay. So this is, an, a really, this is a really good example of a behavioral question. So give me an example of a time when you had a setback or disappointment concerning a project or activity you were responsible for. Right? When you, if you're not prepared to answer a question like that in an interview, you're gonna freeze, right? You're gonna, your, conf, your nerves are instantly gonna start to get the better of you. However, if you have prepared a star for it, you're going to be sitting there confident and looking really what, like you're well prepared for this interview, right? So what is a star? A star response is broken down like this. What is the situation, right? So what was the situation? So you're setting the scene, right? You're giving them a high level like headline of what was going on. Maybe you're working on a project. Maybe you were given a task to do, or if it's a conflict situation, maybe it was a conflict with, um, you know, another coworker or maybe an external vendor that you were working with, whatever that situation might be, right? You're just setting the scene, think headline. And then the next, the T in the star stands for task or target. What specifics, what were the specific of what was required? So who was involved, right? You're basically telling a story, like who was involved, who were the stakeholders, right? Um, when was it, you know, um, uh, where was it? And this kind of things, when was it, right? That kind of stuff, again, so you're just giving them kind of some data here, right? What, are the, what was the task at hand? And what were the specifics of what you were required to do, okay? And then the A is for action. What you did, what did you do? What skills did you use, right? And what behaviors and characteristics did you display? Now, you're not gonna say I demonstrated great communication skills and great leadership skills and problem solving skills. You're going to, that will come through in the actions that you took, right? So what did you take? What actions did you take to achieve that task or the goal or what was required of you in that particular situation? Right. And from there, as an interviewer, they'll be able to assess the behaviors and characteristics that you demonstrated, right, when you were following through on that action or that task that you were asked to do, or how you handled a conflict or a challenging situation. I can just sense as an interviewer, as somebody's telling me the story and what, describing what happened, what kind of characteristics that they demonstrate and what behaviors and skills that they used during that time. And then the R is the result. What was the outcome of what happened, right? And a lot of times you wanna link the result back up to the situation, right? So in the situation you're describing, you maybe you might see something like, I'll give you an example. Um, I had to implement this project in three months and it was in three different countries and three different call centers, blah, blah, blah right? So you, and then the result would link back to that, right? So we were able to apply all three, you know, all um, this technology in all three countries and all three call centers to, uh, you know, 500 end, end users, right? So you wanna link your result back up to the situation so that you're kind of creating a nice tidy loop, right? You're not leaving any loose ends. And don't be afraid to say in the result, if something didn't, happen quite right, right? Maybe you didn't deploy to in, in, this, in, the, in the example I just gave you to all three countries, share why that was the case, right? And that's a second star for you, should it come up, right? So really um, take the time before an interview to think about, go through your resume and think about all the different things that you did in each role that you held and what stars you can create out of that, right? You could have, 
a star that talks about the positive thread in a story, a star that talks about what didn't go quite right, what challenges you, you face, what conflicts you face, maybe you had communication issues, right? So from one star, you could potentially create two or three um, sub stars from it, right? So it's really important that you take the time to, to do those stars so that when you're asked those behavior questions, you are super prepared and you are able to answer it from a real place of confidence, right? So when I'm working with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, what I have them do is, you know those flip chart papers that have um, they're like giant post-it notes that you can stick on the wall? I have them write their stars out on their flip, those flip chart papers. And especially when you're virtual, right? You can stick them all around you so that when you're answering the question, they're right there. Or you can have them, you know, I'm standing uh, up right now doing this talk and I have papers all over my table, but you can't see that, right, <laughs> that I'm referring to. So just you can have your stars to hand, especially in a virtual situation that you can just reflect upon. And if you have them on the wall behind your camera, it's really easy for you to just kind of glance up and jog your memory and then share, pick one that is relevant to the question that you're being asked, okay? Okay. Um, I'm just being asked in the interest of time. Yes, you can. So can we blend S and T and spend most of the time on action and results? Certainly, but make sure that your answer is succinct. Okay. All right. So hopefully that helps you answer and gives you a tool to answer those we had that particular kind of example of in a question. Now, a lot of the time we do get asked about our last or um, our last or current job or employer question, okay? Now it's really, really critical when you're answering this question that if you are in an emotionally, uh, if you are in an, an emotionally charged situation, so maybe you're working in an environment that you're not particularly happy about, or maybe you have a boss that you really don't care for right now. And the scary statistic there is that 50% of employees work for leaders and managers that they don't particularly care for. That's a really scary thought right there and then, right? So if that is you, when you get asked this question, you really need to practice this one in the mirror, right? So that you're watching your body language when you're answering this question. So just stick to the facts, right? Just stick to the facts of what you did at that company, right? Um, Stick to the facts, just take the, emo when you stick to the facts, you're actually diffusing the emotion, right? You're removing the emotion from the response. So I've had so many clients that have worked in a toxic environment. And as soon as I test, you know, I do a role play with them and ask them this question, I can immediately tell if they've had, if they're having a positive or a negative experience with their current or past employer, right? So if you were furloughed and that left you with a really bad taste in your mouth, then I would suggest that you really practice this question in the mirror or with somebody who can watch your body language, right? So that you're not like rolling your eyes or you've got this look of anger on your face or just disappointment or sadness, right? You need to really practice just removing the emotion and just sticking to the facts about that past employer or your current employer, right? That's really gonna go a long way, again, because as an interviewer, I'm going to pick up on all that body language, okay? Especially if I'm a seasoned person that's always interviewing people, okay? All right, so let's move on to body language. I think that's a good segue into body language. So <laughs> even when you're virtual, you are still communicating, right? Because you can sense the energy coming off of me through the camera, I hope, right? When I'm standing here talking to you today. So really still even if you know even if you're doing a ton of virtual interviews and even if you're on the phone you are still um exuding um communication right like you're going to be able to pick up things on what the person is saying in the tone of their voice right we are walking talking communication devices we're basically like radios right even when we're not saying anything we're saying something because it's in our energy you can you've heard the phrase you know you walk in a room and you can cut the atmosphere with a knife. So you don't even need to know what's been happening before you've walked in there, but you can sense, right, the energy of the room. And the, and so the same thing goes for you. You need to be aware of, okay, what frequency am I giving out right now? Am I giving one out of being really nervous and scared about this conversation that I'm about to have in this interview? 
or am I exuding joy and gratitude and just fun and, and looking forward to having this conversation, right? So check in with yourself. What are you emitting in terms of your frequency, right? So what per percentage of the, has a, most of you probably have heard by now of the communication pie. So what do you think? What percentage of our communication is the spoken word? Pop that in the chat for me. Don't Google this, just pop it in the chat. <laughs> All right, oh, fantastic. 5%, 20%, 50%. Okay, some good guesses there. So, and what percentage do you think is our tone of voice? What percentage of the communication pie do you think is our tone of voice? All right. 50%, okay. Any other guesses? 50%, 70%, okay. 100%, <laughs> fantastic. And lastly, what do you think, what percentage do you think of our communication is non-verbal? So the things that we're saying, what we're not, you know, with our face or our body language, what percentage do you think is that? Oh, 90 to 95, okay, 50%, 100%, 25%. Some excellent guesses, some excellent guesses. Okay, so that's how, this is how it's broken down. So only 7% of our communication is the words that come out of our mouth, okay? A whopping 38% is our tone of voice. So you know, when you're having an argument with somebody, and they've triggered you and it's like it's not what you said it's how you said it that's what we're talking about here right it's your tone of voice it's crucial especially when you're on the phone doing an interview right and then 55 percent is your body language right so your facial expressions and how you're presenting yourself in your body language you know so are you fidgeting a lot with your hands are you playing with your hair while you're on camera because you think your hair looks doesn't look quite right on the camera right what are you doing with your body language when you're in an interview? So 55% is your non-verbals. And what they don't talk about in the communication pie is what I was talking about before, which is the energy that you're giving off, right? So we all communicate, all our emotions give off a frequency. This is not me giving you some woo-woo. This is based on scientific fact, right? So every emotion that you feel, you are exerting a certain frequency and we as the amazing human beings that we are, are able to pick up on that frequency. Okay, so when, again, when you are in an interview situation, check in with yourself, okay? What frequency am I giving off right now? Am I giving one off of being confident and competent in being here right now? Or am I very, very nervous and timid and afraid, right? So you can tell immediately how somebody else is feeling because I bet you've said to somebody, they haven't even said a word to you, right? But you can just tell from their body language and maybe their demeanor. You might want to, you might say to them, are you doing okay today, right? And that's because you're picking up not just on their body language, but on the energy that they're giving off as well, their emotional frequency. All right. So how do you get confident? Well, you've got to get your Beyonce on, right? I mean, think about somebody who you really admire that makes you think, God, that person is so confident, right? Whenever I see Beyonce perform, she is just like this goddess, right? She is doing it. She's doing her thing. She's standing in her power. So who inspires you that you want to emulate that, you know, as if you were them in confidence, right? So think about somebody that inspires you that you're like, yeah, I want to kind of get my Beyonce on, the equivalent of getting my Beyonce on, right? Who is that person for you? And then think about doing um, superhero poses. Now, Amy Cuddy did a TED talk a few years ago on power posing. And what that does for you is it raises your um, testosterone and reduces your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, right? So it raises your, your testosterone, which is your confidence hormone, and it reduces your um, cortisol, cortisol uh, hormone, which is your stress hormone. So you, as part of your interview preparation, I would highly recommend that you stand for two minutes doing a power pose. Now, when I did this to a bunch of kids um, 
in a in a high school I said to them okay get your power pose on you know and you know most of the time when I do this with adults they're all standing there with their hands on their hips doing that kind of superhero pose but these kids were so damn cute they were going like this and they were just like doing this and they were just getting on their superhero poses and it was so much fun to watch so you do whatever superhero pose and you hold that for two minutes now I would highly recommend that you stand in front of the mirror doing the pose for two minutes and play whatever favorite song or inspirational poem or whatever inspires you as you're standing in front of the mirror for two minutes. Maybe there's a mantra or an affirmation that you say to yourself, right? One of the things that I like to say to myself is I have value, I am worthy, right? And I'll just repeat that over and over in my mind while I'm doing that power pose for two minutes. And sometimes I'll have a, a song that really inspires me um, playing in the background as well. I was working with a client recently and I had her stand in front of the mirror and I said, OK, what inspirational song do you want me to play for you? And she chose something from Metallica, right? Not my, <laughs> not my go to song, but for her, it was super, super pumped her up, got her revved up and feeling really, really confident in herself, right? So whatever works for you, do it. Whatever you need to do, just do it. And this is a really powerful um, confidence boosting technique. Okay, I'm just checking my time right now. So when you are meeting, I would go so far to say, even when you're meeting in virtually, right? You want to still assume you're meeting that person in person, right? So you want to maintain an assertive posture hearing Rocky in my head right now. I love that, Shelley. Now you've got me thinking about it too. <laughs> um, you want to maintain an assertive posture. So what that basically means is that you're going to have your hands to the side and you're kind of neutral, right? But you're standing with your feet slightly apart, shoulder width, maybe just less than shoulder width apart. And that goes for women as well, because a lot of the time, and I'm not picking on women necessarily, but we tend to stand with our, sometimes we stand with our feet crossed in front of each other, right? And that can be a little bit unbalancing for you, right? So when you stand with your feet slightly apart, um, it's very grounding, it plants you very firmly on the ground, and then you can really talk from a much more confident place, right? We already mentioned about power poses. Again, watch your hands, okay? Um, don't be fiddling with your hair, don't be fiddling with anything. If you're a fidgeter with your hands, just have them in front of you. Now, it's not to say that you can't use your hands to express what you're saying. I'm a talker. You can see that I'm constantly moving my hands, right, um, when I speak. Um, that's fine. But don't, you know, just be aware, be aware of what are you actually doing with your hands, right? Are you fidgeting with something? Are you um, picking at something on your clothes when you speak, right? So just be aware of what you're doing with your hands. And pay attention to your face. Your face gives so many things away, right? It doesn't matter sometimes what's coming out of your mouth. Your face is going to be telling the truth, right? So your what, what's coming out of your mouth and your facial expressions need to be congruent. So when you're practicing questions where you, there might be an emotional charge behind them, and you're trying to remove, diffuse that emotional charge and stick to the facts, like what I was saying before, practice in front of the mirror or practice with a friend or videotape yourself, right? Use your phone, grab your phone and video yourself answering that question, right? Just to see what is my face actually doing when I respond to this question? Is it congruent with the words coming out of my mouth, right? Because again, you can always tell, right, when someone's BSing you because something's not quite right when they're, when they're showing a response with you, okay? And maintain appropriate eye contact. Now, when you're in person doing an interview, it doesn't mean that you need to stare. I don't know whether you can see me in the camera right now, but don't stare at them and don't blink. That's really inappropriate eye contact, right? Appropriate eye contact. So look at them in the eye. Um, uh, don't keep looking away when you're talking to somebody because what does that make me think when I'm really not looking at you when I'm speaking? What, does that, what impression does that potentially give me? You can pop it in the chat. When somebody's not giving you appropriate eye contact, what do you? What does it make you think? That you're nervous, yeah. You're disinterested, exactly. 
Thank you, Barbara. You're checking your <laughs> you're checking your phone while you're talking. You're not telling the truth. You're not trustworthy, right? So there's all these like negative connotations when you're not maintaining appropriate eye contact. Um, and I'll talk about uh, video um, stuff in a second. I think somebody had a video question. Should they stand or should they sit when they're doing the video? A mirror the language, body language of others. What do I mean by that? So this is easier to do when you're in person, but maybe, you know, they've got their hands in front of them. So you're going to want to mirror that, right? Um, and what I would challenge you to do is see if they're mirroring you. If they're mirroring your body language, that's a really, really good sign because it means what do you think that means? I'm going to ask you. Cultural differences though with eye contact. Yes, there, that is true. What do you think it means when somebody's mirroring your language in a conversation, your body language in a conversation? Yes, they're engaged and interested in what you're saying. Thank you, Linda. Yes, you've caught their attention. There's a connection. Perfect, beautiful, right? So I would, I would play an experiment to see, hey, look, you know, if we're mirroring my body language. When you know that's happening, this is a really good sign for you, okay? And then stop fidgeting. So like, again, if you are somebody who's constantly clicking your pen when you speak because you're nervous or it's some kind of way to distract you, stop it, put the pen down, <laughs> put the pen down and just don't have anything nearby that you can grab and touch if that's you, um, a way of you dealing with your nerves. The better way to deal with your nerves is just to be really prepared for your interview, okay? So that you're not worrying about your nerves you're ready for the conversation no matter what okay just checking the time so because so many of our interviews nowadays are uh, virtual um, i added this list um, to help you give some tips gives you some further tips and tricks to help you really feel prepared and confident for a virtual interview okay so Always make sure before the interview, you have downloaded the technology that they are using. There's so many virtual meeting platforms right now. Um, Zoom obviously being a very popular one, but there's so many more um, that that company might be using an enterprise version of some kind of video conferencing app, right, or tool. So make sure that you have downloaded that particular platform so that you have it ready to go and you're not scrambling at the last minute to try and download whatever technology that they're using okay and if they've emailed you you know the link the login credentials the meeting password and everything like that make sure you print a hard copy of that email off or save it somewhere in multiple places so that you can easily access it and you're not trying to find it through reams and reams of emails that you've got in your personal email okay I had a client that um, was sent a virtual meeting invitation for an interview and they couldn't find the email <laughs> where it had all that information. So don't make that mistake, okay? Learn from that person. Have it, email it again to yourself in a different email address so you know exactly where it is, print it off, download it, save it to a drive, right? Whatever you can do to have a backup copy of that email, do it. And make sure whatever device that you are using can support the platform that you're going to be interviewed on, right? There's nothing worse than, again, um, you know, trying to join an interview and your device doesn't support that technology, right? So you need to make sure right before, way beforehand, that your device can support the video platform that they're using, right? And test, 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 test the technology. I can't emphasize this enough, right? ask someone to video conference with you using that platform know your way around the software because you might be asked to do a presentation right as part of your interview and um if you don't have a clue how to use that particular platform you're going to look that's going to just add to your nerves right and you don't need that you really don't need that so just test the technology ask somebody to uh, join a meeting that you've created so that you can really get to know the software watch youtube videos on how to use the tool right whatever you need to do to learn that software do it again because this is all about you just showing up on the on the moment for your interview and being super prepared and confident and make sure that you have an excellent wi-fi or internet connection now for this conference call that I'm doing today. I don't know whether you can see me on camera, but I'm actually connected with an ethernet, 
right? So I've hardwired myself to my um, internet provider's box, right, through an ethernet. Now, if your laptop or device doesn't have an ethernet connection, get an adapter that does. So I've got a USB ethernet adapter, right? And um, it just, when you're hardwired, you, you won't have that issue with a spotty Wi-Fi connection, okay? So that's really, really, and it doesn't cost much. If you're going to probably do a $20 investment, you can get an Ethernet cable, a cable from, I got mine from Best Buy. I think it was like 10 bucks and it's 25 feet long, <laughs> right? So invest, do the investment that you need to do so that you're really not worrying about your Wi-Fi cutting out, your internet being spotty or anything like that. Hardwire if you can, okay? It's always the best way to go. Um, move And number six, so... Make sure that when you are doing your interview, you are in a quiet area of the home with no distracting background. Um, no, you know, you know, you're not going to get interrupted by the dog, the cats, the kids, <laughs> what else, whatever else is going on in your home, right? Make sure that you find a spot in the home that's as quiet as possible, because I know it's hard these days, especially because maybe not all kids are back at school yet. Um, maybe you've got more bodies in the house than you usually would have when you're doing an interview, but find a place to do the interview and let your family know or whoever's living with, with you know, hey, look, you know, I've got an interview at this time. I'd really appreciate it if you could respect that and just be quiet for the next hour, right? And just prepare them for you to, to have some quiet time too. And make sure your background is not distracting, right? It's nothing worse than you know, somebody look at, not looking at you, but they're more interested in what's going on in the background or what chaos is going on in the background, right? So again, if you can keep it as blank as possible, fantastic. And Zoom and I, I believe other platforms as well have those, you know, those green screen black, black backgrounds that you can also put behind you. Now, if you have your stars, if you've listened to anything I've said on this <laughs> presentation, if you have your stars ready, have them and any notes to hand, right? So have them around you, easily accessible, easily visual, um, easily for you to look at, right? Um, take them to your screen. Um, obviously don't obscure the camera, but have them maybe have some key things maybe taped to your screen that you really wanna emphasize during your interview and touch upon during the interview, okay? And then lighting. Do not look like you're in some kind of criminal show where you're like a black silhouette, right? There's nothing. They want to see you. That's the whole point. There's a video, right? So make sure that you are not backlit because one way to make sure that they can't see you is if all the lighting is coming out from behind you. So you want to be front lit. And now if you can sit in front of a window that has a lot of natural light, fantastic, right? If um, natural light is the best kind of light to help light you with um, when you're doing uh, an interview. OK, however, if that's not possible for you, just get grab a bunch of your lampshades around the house, stick them behind your laptop. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. If I'm going to turn my camera around, I don't know whether you can see that, but basically I have a giant lampshade in front of my behind my camera on my laptop to light me up so that I don't look like this. You know, I've got a bunch of different shadows going on across my face, right? You want to be clearly visible um, in your video. And then position your device high up. So I'm standing up to do this talk. And I would really recommend that when you're doing um, a virtual interview, just be on your feet, right? And I'm actually wearing my slippers. I'm not wearing heels right now. I'm actually wearing slippers right now so that I, my feet are flat on the ground, I am planted and I am grounded. And my, I'm doing my walking my talk right now. My feet are slightly separate apart, shoulder width apart. And I'm just standing here talking with you guys, right? And it just helps you think on your feet. So when you, um, that, that phrase is very true. You're able to breathe better when you're standing up because when you're sitting, what you're doing is you're kind of contracting your diaphragm a little bit and you're and when you're nervous that just it helps you it makes your breathing even more difficult so when you're standing up you can breathe everybody take a breath with me right you can breathe so much easier when you're standing up so i would highly recommend 
that you stand up doing your interview. But if you're going to stand up, make sure that you've elevated your laptop. Think selfie, right? So whenever we're taking selfies, you see everybody doing this kind of thing, right? Right, you want the camera to be as flattering for you as possible, right? So the higher you have your camera, the better you're going to appear on the camera, on the video, right? I've got mine right now on a box. <laughs> I'm just being completely transparent. I've got my laptop sitting on a box, so it's like almost a foot off the table so that I'm literally almost eye level with the camera as I speak to you today, okay? And then when you get the interview details, I've already said this, um, test the link ahead of time. Does it work for you? And if it doesn't, email the person that sent you the link and say, hey, look, this link doesn't work for me, right? So that you can get all of the technical crap out of the way before you've even got on the interview. Okay. <laughs> Sherry says, love it, a box. Yeah, why not? Um, it works. If it doesn't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? All right. And lastly, I am going to end with remember to let your light shine. Um, our deepest fear, and this is a quote from Marianne Williamson our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our dark, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people don't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give others people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. And lastly, I just want to, I always end my talks with this particular slide, because it just, again, it just puts you right back in your body when you read this, I think, anyway. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Be kind always. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Carmen. How about the virtual handshake? Woo! <laughs> So good, you all. Thank you for engaging on the chat. Um, really, really well done. Um, there's just so much content you packed into today. Thank you so much. We will be, um, we're working on a blog, an event recap, and that will be um, posted on our website. So a lot of the content that you gave us today will be there. Um, also, I can't remember what you said. Are, are you dropping off or will you be able to stay at the end for some uh, q and I, I have to drop off. I'm so sorry. But if you have any questions, I posted my LinkedIn um, link in the chat somewhere. <laughs> so oh, Carmen, me. do you have time for one more quick question? Sure. Oh, great. So someone was asking, what if a circumstance arises that you need to reschedule an interview? Mm -hmm. Is that a horrible thing to do? I'm actually interested in Carmen and Jessica's opinions. No, life happens, right? Mm -hmm. Life happens. So just be honest and say, hey, look, I'm really sorry. I'm super excited. Again, you've got to demonstrate your enthusiasm to want to re-engage with them and just say, if, um, avoid that happening, obviously, if you can. But if something's come up that's really unavoidable because life just happens, just tell the interviewer, hey, look, I would really love to um, reschedule this interview with you. This is, you know, be honest and transparent. Maybe you might want to share what's actually happened just so that you can get them to understand um, and have some empathy or sympathy for you. Um, and then give them a, a few dates for by which that they can reschedule the interview, right? So say, hey, look, that just demonstrates to me as an interview that you've thought about, hey, when, you know, when I, these are the opportunities that I have and openings I have that I would love to re, uh, reschedule my interview with you with. That, that would be my, my um, approach to that. 100%. I'm with you on all of that, Carmen. Thanks. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, while Carmen was talking about office setup and stuff, I went ahead and was taking some pictures of my office setup, and I'm going to put, put them out on um, uh, the Career Connectors Instagram and Facebook stories. Uh, on our page. And so if you're interested in kind of seeing a setup, um, you can buy O-ring lights for right in front of your face for I think 20 bucks, I think is what I got mine for. So I'll show you what those look like um, because some of those tips are excellent. I about cracked up when you talked about the, the prison 
<laughs> the prison silhouette. <laughs> yes, let's not do that in an inter interview. <laughs> Uh, so funny. So um, also, I, um, you know, I, I'm kind of laughing at the whole handshaking thing is so weird right now. It's almost like it's the icebreaker to the interview. <laughs> and so if you're uncomfortable with the, the handshake, most of most people are not shaking hands, but also most people don't know what to do. So, you know, just kind of make light of it and laugh. Um, that always is a great icebreaker. And so there was a, a couple comments um, about the interview that I just wanted to address and just um, remind you guys that the interview is the connection. It's the place where they're going to see if they like you or not. Um, for the most part, by the time you get to the interview, they have looked at your resume. Um, they know you're probably qualified. And so you, you need to explain your experience in their interview and explain what you're going to do for the company but you're there to connect. And so that you make sure you guys can like each other and can work together. And so that is the most important part of the interview. So I love all your tips today, Carmen. They all set everyone up for success in that way. So thank you so much for being here. You're welcome, thank you. All right, so um, I see Sharon, yes, we can do, um, I will actually, while the next speaker's talking, I'll go out and um, to my Amazon account and look to see which O-ring I bought and I will drop it in the, um, in the chat so you can see which one it is. Um, but again, um, any O-rings are pretty, I like the bigger ones, maybe because I have a big head, I don't know, but I like the bigger ones. They seem to um, give more light. Um, so I'll do that for you. All right, so we are gonna move on now to our hiring companies. And just to reiterate a couple things. Um, one, we have three companies speaking for a few minutes each. And at the end of these talks uh, in about a half hour, we will be able to go off into different breakout rooms where you can talk directly to these hiring companies. And also you can talk to all the resource um, with all the people we've brought as resources, professional resume writers, social media experts, LinkedIn coaches, and more. Um, so you're gonna have time at the end to speak with each of them. And so, uh, because we're not the expert in all things, we bring them in for you. And then if you have questions for the companies as they're speaking, feel free to drop them in the chat and they will either address them when they're speaking or done speaking, or they'll address them after just through the chat. So Kent Norris, Kent has been with Hacienda Healthcare for almost five years now, and he helps to lead the effort to attract and retain top tier talent for the company to care for their clients. Previously, Kent oversaw HR responsibilities as the HR manager for Soil Works, and then prior to that, he spent almost three decades in HR roles for State Farm. Kent holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Industrial Management from Illinois State University. We're so grateful to have you back. Kent, please help me welcome Kent Norris to the stage. Thank you. Hey, I just wanted to add on to what Carmen and Jessica said from a... Um, uh, hiring companies perspective, uh, don't ever do a no call, no show. There's never a reason not to call and say, hey, I, I already got another job or, hey, I, uh, I, I don't want to interview with your company. You are not going to upset anybody. But if you do a no call, no show, um, th that gets flagged in all of our company's system. And next time, you know, we always say don't burn any bridges. Um, if you decide later on down the road, hey, you know, I want to come back to this company. Well, they've already got a bad taste in their mouth because they will remember that you did a no call, no show. So I just wanted to, to add on to that. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about um, my company. Uh, again, I'm Kent Norris, the HR manager there. Uh, how did we become Hacienda Healthcare? Well, um, Eileen Butler is our founder. And back in the 60s, she moved here from Illinois. She was a single lady and um, she wanted to adopt. And back in the 60s in the state of Arizona, um, they said, uh, I'm sorry, but you need to be uh, married. We do not allow single um, females to adopt or 
you know, uh, to have children, basically. And there was a lot of petitioning going on. And by 1967, the state of Arizona said, okay, you can, you can adopt children. So uh, Eileen uh, adopted a little girl and that kind of jump-started Hacienda Healthcare. Um, back then we were kind of known as the, the home of the angels in the 70s. And by 1970, Eileen uh, had 19 children and 10 employees and they were working out of a, a mobile home. Uh, now, you know how hot it gets here in the summertime. I would not have wanted to be working in a mobile home with 19 children and 10 employees. Uh, then in 1976, uh, a church uh, donated property, which is 1402 East South Mountain Avenue. That's where we're located at. And that kind of jump-started uh, our, our main home uh, at Hacienda Healthcare and 35 children moved into the facility. Back in 2006, we changed our name uh, to Hacienda Healthcare. So we have uh, proudly been serving the community for well over 50 years. Uh, we've got an, inter an intermediate care facility where uh, we have uh, disabled and very uh, fragile clients. Uh, that is their home 24-7. Uh, we have eight group homes, five medical and three non-medical. We have a day program that we had to shut down during the, uh, the 2020 because of COVID. Uh, they were all staying in their group homes. And I'm happy to announce that uh, next week we're going to start opening back up our day program so that the clients can come and sing karaoke and, and do all sorts of things. And then we do have home health uh, for med medical fragile uh, pediatrics and some adults. What I would say is we have uh, over 300 employees and you, know, you talk about COVID, 78% uh, of our staff has been uh, fully vaccinated and 85% of our clients have been vaccinated. Um, we take a lot of precautions. Uh, every day coming to work, uh, you need to uh, check in, get your temperature read. We give you a new mask and uh, we have full PPE. Uh, basically we have two months full of uh, PPE right now. So masks, gowns, uh, gloves, et cetera. Uh, we are hiring um, RNs, LPNs, CNAs, caregivers. Uh, I have a maintenance position open right now. Full, and these are all full-time, part-time, and what we call PRN. Uh, until I got into the uh, healthcare industry, I, I had no idea what PRN is. And, and basically that is on call. And that is where you're really not eligible for benefits, but your pay is a little bit uh, higher because of that. Um, normally you, you work probably 12 hours, maybe less uh, a month. It just all depends. We have group home managers, uh, medical group home managers. We, we have a speech language pathologist position uh, that is available, uh, plus much, much more. And I can talk about that later. Kind of what uh, benefits we do offer, uh, probably the standard, a medical, dental, vision, uh, company paid life, supplemental life. We have an employee assistance program. We do subsidize uh, bus passes. so. Uh, gosh, I don't have a car right now. Um, we do have bus passes that we uh, give to our employees. Um, six day, sick days, vacation days. We have a 403B. Uh, it's like a 401k. And um, after three years that you're vested, um, there is a 4% company match. And then we have six holiday, uh, paid holidays. How to apply. Uh, HaciendaInc.org 
and you can go to jobs or uh, at the, the next slide, uh, I'll give you my information. But uh, what's interesting about our, our uh, system is when you apply, your application goes directly to the hiring manager. So there is no, I'm not gonna kick you out of the system. We don't have a computer that is gonna say, well, you don't have the proper keywords and gonna knock you out. It goes directly to the hire, hiring manager. So they view all of the applications that come in. Here is my contact information. Uh, you can always call me, you can always email me, you can email me your resume if you're struggling, um, you know, trying to do the online application. I'm always here to help you. And then any sort of questions. Um, I know that we're going to have, I'm going to be in a chat room at the end. Uh, so please feel free to go in the chat room, ask me questions, give me a hard time, etc. Awesome. Thank you, Kent. Um, and I just want to reiterate, um, I do a lot of interviewing for clients and it just floors me that people no call, no show. And then a couple of weeks later, I'll get an email like, hey, I'd like to be considered for that job again. No, <laughs> you're not going to be considered for this job again. So maybe that didn't work out, but you need to treat people well all the time. So Thanks, Kent. We really appreciate it. All right. So we're going to be moving on now over to Vanessa Corona. Uh, Vanessa has been part of Cable One for 13 years. I bet y'all didn't even know that Cable One and Sparklight were around for 13 years. She started in customer service and has been on the recruiting team for about six years. And she is proud of the culture and environment that Cable One offers and loves matching people with new opportunities. Please help, please help me welcome Vanessa Corona to our event today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here and thank you for having us. It was a great conversation. Um, I, yeah, I agree about the no call, no show. I mean, there are, I guess, some instances where that might happen, like very, very rare, you know, but at the company would be, if you let them know right away, like, hey, I was in a car accident or hey, something happened that I couldn't make it, we will be understanding. Um, but if you just don't say anything and a week later, like like Jessica said, you're, you're asking for the job or a different job, hmm, were you the person who didn't show up last time? <laughs> we'll remember. <laughs> so um, thank you again for having us. I'll tell you a little bit more about Cable One. Um, like Jessica said, maybe you're not familiar with us. Um, so we are a broadband communications provider. We are headquartered here in Phoenix. We've been around for over 30 years. Um, we're owned by the Washington Post, um, spun off and then became public. In 2015, we became a publicly traded company. So we've been growing quite a bit. Um, I know that when I started, it just, it was, you know, smaller company, at least from my perspective. And now it's grown quite a bit. Um, we have added different companies to Cable One. And we also rebranded our customer facing um, side of, of, uh, of the business, I would say, to Sparklight. So so we were just Cable One. That was the name of the, of the entire company. We rebranded to Sparklight Customer Facing, and then we kept the name Cable One as the parent company. And now we have other brands like Fidelity, ClearWave, ValueNet Fiber, and then just another one that was just announced recently, actually, that's not even on here yet. So we, we're growing. We have definitely um, a lot of opportunities. I'll see new requisitions come in. I'm like, why are there different openings in this area? Are people leaving? What's going on? And then later I find out, oh, we purchased another company. So it's definitely exciting times for, for us. Um, and what I really like about the company here is that the culture, I would say, um, even though we've grown into a larger company, we still have a very close knit culture, um, a, a culture that the things that the foundations that the company has have remained. And I and I really love seeing that. Um, because even though I would say we are getting to be more of a mid sized um, to large, com larger company, but the culture is still a very close knit culture, more kind of family oriented as well. Um, so really like that we um, have our, you know, our, our uh, basic principles, which are very simple uh, principles that we that we live by um, at the company. And I would say they apply to um, 
you know, to, they apply to everyone and they apply in not only at work, but they could apply even to just someone's life as well. So I would say if you, if you, um, you know, that's definitely a big part of why I've remained here so long. And here on the, the pictures here, you, you can see some of our associates, um, you know, just giving back to the community. I think that's a big part of our culture. Um, what right now with COVID, I would say, I, I love be, seeing that because, you know, everybody's going through something right now. Um, and, and, you know, COVID has affected everyone in one way or another. But the fact that I see like, our associates are like going out and and finding ways to give back, you know, and and that doesn't always mean a donation, you know, that's part of it. But sometimes it's just, hey, you know, take a moment to, you know, um, write a note to someone who uh, maybe um, maybe they 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 can't be with their family because maybe they're in a hospice or whatever that may be. It could be something simple that you know make makes a big difference in someone's life. So so that's just a big part of our culture, I would say as well. Now, um, with the pandemic, um, there has been, you know, a lot of uh, different processes put in place because we do need to continue to provide services to our customers since we are, you know, even more now, even more than ever, um, an essential business with, you know, our, our kids going to school online, with work being um, remote. We do have to make sure our customers are taken care of and that they have the service that they need to, to keep going with their lives. So um, we have put measures in place to make sure that our associates are safe, that our customers are safe, are safe, um, including like our meetings, our interviews, those are all held virtually. Um, and also we are working from home. You know, there are some roles of course that are not able to work from home. Like if you're an in technician installing services, for example, but for the, for the majority of our roles, roles or a lot of our roles, we can work from home and are working from home at the moment here in the Phoenix office as well. Um, we have, I didn't mention we have uh, services in 21 states. Some of you may have seen that on the first slide. I kind of went into more talking about um, just a few other things, but I wanted to make sure to point that out. So even if you're not in Phoenix, if you are looking for opportunities in other areas, we do have openings in other areas, um, 21 states, and our focus really is on smaller and mid-sized um, areas. So here are some of those openings, actually, and you'll also see some of the benefits that we offer here. If you are in one of our local areas, um, you don't get the $75 monthly stipend towards your Cox bill, but instead you get free services. So it's kind of nice. <laughs> and then just connect with us. You know, here's our website. So you can cable1.careers. If you would like to check out, see what opportunities are available, you can connect with us, follow our LinkedIn Sparklight Careers page, um, follow, connect with me on LinkedIn. I know I dropped my my link on uh, the chat earlier in the chat earlier. So just connect with me as well, you know, whether it's to network or if you're looking for a new employment opportunity as well. Um, I will also be available um, after our session here um, for a breakout session. So I'm looking forward to meeting you. And any questions, feel free to reach out, please. Thank you so much for having me today, Jessica and team. Thank you, Vanessa. We appreciate you being here. Um, all right. Uh, lots of great jobs at uh, Cable One. And I know that, you know, they're not fully back in the office, but they do have a fantastic facility that I've been able to tour. So uh, really appreciate you being here, Vanessa. Thanks so much for your time. All right, Heather. Heather Markham is here today. She is the head of talent acquisition at Freedom Financial Network. And prior to that, she was the vice president of global talent acquisition for R1 RCM in Chicago. She ha also has served as Vice President of Talent Acquisition for Charles Schwab and Head of Talent Acquisition for PayPal and also with Supplemental Healthcare in Phoenix. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree from Illinois State University and is originally from the Chicago area. In her spare time, she is an active in dog rescue and currently serves as the President of Rescue a Golden of Arizona. Heather, so glad you're here, welcome. Hi, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me. It's always good to see all these all these faces um, and uh, to hear all the different speakers. It's, it's so nice to see all the opportunity out there and, and hopefully everybody will go out and grab one. Um, but speaking of uh, Freedom Financial Network today, let me see if I've got control here. Uh, hang on, let me see here. No, no, there we go. Okay. 
So um, I'm going to share a little bit about Freedom Financial Network because I think that um, over the, while over the past few years, I think that our um, name recognition in the market has definitely increased and a lot more people kind of know who we are and what we do. There's still a lot of people out there who probably have heard the name. They've probably even driven by our buildings over off the 202 and the 101 right next to Tempe Marketplace, but they're not quite sure exactly what Freedom Financial Network does. So I'm going to give you a little bit of insight into who we are, what we do, why we do it, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the opportunities that we have available right now, and we do have quite a few. Um, so first of all, um, we are a 17-time best, place uh, best Places to Work winner across Phoenix and the Bay Area, which is where our corporate headquarters is. Um, we're very proud that we um, were named the number four best place to work for 2020. Um, and so we are, um, we love that award because that award is 100% um, voted on by our employees. And so when they're happy and they're engaged, um, you know, we get good scores, which gets us on that list. Um, so Freedom Financial Network is, um, we are the leading uh, provider of debt relief solutions in the US. So we are the largest and we are one of the oldest. Um, we have served over 900,000 consumers in this program and we have resolved over $12 billion worth of debt. Um, in addition to our debt relief services, we also um, offer lending products. So we have our personal loans and we offer consolidation loans and our newest line of business, which we call Lendage, offers um, in, in the mortgage space right now in HELOC. So we have originated over $5 billion worth of loans already. So let me go to the next slide. There we go. So this is kind of who we are. This is our, uh, it's kind of our, what we call our, our employer value proposition. So we truly do believe this. We believe that the people, people are the key drivers of our market defining innovation and success. We strive to nurture an inclusive caring culture, position everybody to do their best work. And we are deeply committed to providing work that makes a meaningful impact by helping everyday Americans move forward towards a better financial future. So what does that mean exactly? Let me get to the next slide. I don't know why I'm having so much trouble with these slides. Hang on, oh, there we go, okay. So what that means is we are in a position as a company to help people when they're most likely in you know, a pretty severe um, debt situation. And unfortunately, this happens to a lot of people. Um, it can happen to me, it can happen to you, it can happen to anybody. Uh, we see people come into our program because they lost their job um, and they did their best to kind of try to stay afloat, but eventually they had to start using credit cards and kind of get themselves into the situation. We've seen loss of spouse. Um, or you know, some other sort of death in the family or major um, medical issue. Um, all of these things and a variety of reasons can um, really result in people kind of getting into this, this debt situation that you know, they really have a hard time figuring out how, to, how they're gonna get out of that. So when people are in that situation, we are there to help them. And unfortunately, we're probably one of the only financial service institutions at that point who will help them. The big banks won't, the credit card companies won't, we will. And so we see this as a very um, specific mission that we have and a very um, specific consumer group that we help. Um, and so we have these three different programs based on the level of hardship that a consumer is experiencing at this time. So the more severe enter our debt settlement program and the less severe can work you know, with our, our personal loan products or even our mortgage products. But our goal as a company is to create kind of an overarching um, path for any consumer to, if you start with us when you're in severe hardship, we will have products for you and help you get back on your feet financially to the point where you can get a checking account, you can get a debit card, you can become lendable again. And that's what we do. Um, this just uh, shows a little bit about, um, I think that surprises people of how big this consumer group is and how severe this problem is across the country and how, why, why we are able to help so many people. I won't go through these stats um, individually, you can read them here, but this is a real, real problem for millions and millions of Americans every single day. 
All right. Uh, okay, got it. Thanks. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about um, diversity and inclusion and equity. This has been kind of a hot button, um, you know, out in the community now for a while. And this is something that we take very, very seriously at Freedom. Um, we are deeply committed to um, hiring and nurturing a diverse workforce. And in fact, um, you know, we don't necessarily um, publish these at this point yet, but I will tell you that over 50% of our workforce um, is either ethnically diverse or female in the workforce. Um, and so we're pretty proud of that. And we do offer a lot of resources within the company. Um, I've included here just three of our employee resource groups, Freedom Riders, Freedom Pride, and Freedom Heroes. And the purpose of these groups is for um, you know, any employee who is either a part of this diverse category or simply a supporter can join these groups um, and it allows them to network across the company, network with leaders, um, help them kind of figure out a, a career path throughout Freedom Financial Network, um, offers mentoring, offers opportunities to go out in the community and work with other groups like this. Um, and so we are um, continuing to grow our focus here, here. Right now we've got the three RGs and we will grow more of those this year. All right, let's see here. Next slide. Um, our core values. This is um, who we are and what makes us, I think, unique and special because a lot of companies say they have core values. They even write them on the walls, but they don't always live up to those. And that is absolutely not who we are. We have this theory that if you, if you lead first with the heart, then the dollars will come. And that's that heart and dollar sign. Um, and we balance that with our core values of care. We care for everybody. Obviously we care for our customers, but we care about our employees and our teammates and our community as well. We strive to get better every day, act with integrity, even when nobody's looking, and we strive to be a collaborative environment. Um, and then of course, from a benefit standpoint, from an, from an employee standpoint, we have um, you know, all of the, the benefits that you would probably expect and want. You know, everything from paid vacation and sick time to medical, dental, vision. We even offer pet insurance because for those of you who are like me, pets are my kids. And so that pet insurance is, is important. Um, we actually just announced a, um, an upgrade to our parental leave program. We're now offering 12 weeks of parental leave. Um, and then of course, you know, what would, be, what would we be without um, financial health? So we offer a 401k with um, employee match, um, PTO for volunteer work, PTO off for your birthday, and a whole slew of different things that we do. Um, some of them, you know, maybe a little bit on hold right now because we're not physically in the office, but, um, you know, at some point, you know, we hope that they'll come back. All right, whoops, oh, let me go back one, here we go. I am slide challenged today. So these are some of the open positions that we have. I encourage you though, to go to ffnjobs.com because this is a small sampling. I could not get all of the jobs that we have open into this one slide. But I can tell you that we are almost always hiring in our sales teams and in our customer service teams. So if you have a sales background, um, we have opportunities to sell in our debt relief program or in one of our lending areas. We're also hiring bilingual if you are fluent in Spanish and English. Um, we have openings in our lending products right now for sales. Um, because we're expanding our mortgage business, we're hiring underwriters, processors, closers, um, you name it, um, we're hiring in the mortgage side. And then um, aside from kind of the operation, it surprises a lot of people to know that we hire quite a bit into technology here in the Arizona market. We're always hiring software engineers. We are a Java shop. We typically look you know, for somebody full stack. Um, we're also hiring into our um, data engineering, data science. So we're looking for senior Python developers. We also hire into accounting, marketing, HR, information security, you name it. We're, we're, we're typically um, you know, looking for those people because we are growing, growing fairly rapidly. So lots of opportunities there. Again, a lot more on our website please go um, poke around our career site. There's a lot more information there about who we are as well. And I think that is it.
Thank you, Heather. Yes. Um, a quick question that came up is about remote jobs. So are any of your jobs fully remote or will all be going back into the office? So we don't have a, a, a real good answer for that yet. What I can tell you is right now, all of our jobs are remote, unless you work in facilities, in which case you are at our building, uh, which is very few, but all of our jobs are remote. So the current discussion is that some departments may never go back in the office. Some departments may go back to the office full time and some may end up in sort of a hybrid situation where you're working remote from home, but you know, maybe you go into the office once a week you know, for team meetings and things like that. So what we don't know right now is which departments are gonna, gonna be doing what. So I can't give a good solid answer, but I can tell you that um, there is certainly the possibility that if you join us today um, in a remote situation, that it could stay that way either permanently or at least on kind of a part-time basis. Great, awesome. Okay, thank you, Heather. Um, she will also be available in a breakout room in just a few minutes as we get moving through the breakout. So appreciate your time today. Actually, Jessica, it's going, I have to jump off, but Loretta, who is one of our senior recruiters is gonna be hopping in and she will be here to talk with you. Awesome, Loretta's fantastic, you guys. I know Loretta as well. And so thanks, Heather. Thanks, Loretta, appreciate you guys. All right, so let's uh, go through some um, closing things and then we will get you into those breakout sessions. So uh, Sheila is getting ready to launch an evaluation. This just gives us some feedback since we can't hand out a um, evaluation form right now, but uh, she's gonna launch the poll and then there's gonna be four questions. And if you can just answer the question, that poll will go away. So um, she'll get that up in just a minute here. I also wanna say thank you so much to all of our sponsors uh, that are helping with this event and helping with every event that we do. Um, these are people that partner with us and um, ensure that this program continue moving forward uh, in a virtual format and then hopefully we'll be able to do virtual and live events in the future. Okay, if you haven't checked out our partner site with Best Companies AZ, I encourage you to do that. There is some um, additional resources uh, specifically for, uh, we launched this right after COVID hit about a year ago now, and um, there's verified companies that are hiring. There's some additional resources both for employers and job seekers that are available. Now with um, some of the resources we have for you guys, one of them is the DISC assessment. If you haven't taken this yet, you are welcome to take it. It's a zero cost to you through a partnership we have with Top Talent Consulting. And the DISC will, you remember when Carmen asked you, what are some of your greatest strengths? The DISC will give you a list of those. And so it's a great tool. It'll take you about 10 minutes or so. You can get that at careerconnectors.org backslash DISC. Um, it's also on our website under the Job Seeker Resources section. Also, we are putting together a blog today. I've mentioned it a couple times. We'll have some tips on there. We'll have that SWOT analysis um, that Carmen showed us. We'll throw that into the blog. And a lot of the content and the company information from today um, will be in that blog. So we usually get that up a couple days after the event. But also, we'll have this full webinar posted on our website under the webinar section. And so you can connect with us through social media. We're on all the platforms. I just posted um, the setup of my office if you wanted another example. And then I'm gonna do it on, um, and that's posted on our Instagram account right now, but I'm gonna post it on my LinkedIn profile today as well as our um, Career Connectors Facebook group. And what I'll do is I'll include a link for the O-ring that some of you were asking about. And um, it's actually the O-ring that I bought. I actually bought two of them in one package because I have two set up in my office um, because the lighting isn't great. One right in front of my computer and one to the side. So um, I think it's $33 for both of them. So you um, can get that if you're interested. All right, so we have some awesome, awesome events coming up. Getting ready for the future of work. So what does that look like? What does your future of work look like? Are you staying in the same industry and career? Are you looking to make a change? Well, Stephanie Clarende is gonna be with us and she has um, just a great tool that she is gonna be using. And we're going to send that out to you ahead of time. So if you register for this event, look for our email 
because that email will have a link to a quick assessment you can take before the event comes. And again, this is another free tool that she is giving you that's not typically free. It's only for this event and the people that are coming to this event. So look for that email. And then we have ADP, USAA, and Carvana as our hiring companies. And then for Vet Talks, um, I'm going to talk about that on the next slide. That's March 11th. And then we're back on March 24th again, busting the myths of the construction and trades industry. Here's the thing. This um, industry came to us and said, there are over 100,000 jobs currently and coming in the construction and cra uh, trades crafts industries. And so most people think, okay, I don't wanna be a carpenter or I don't wanna be a plumber. And they're like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. We need all types of people, um, accounting, finance, HR. We need everything. And people get locked into one kind of job when we talk about this industry. And so what we're doing is we're gonna have all of these companies you see here, we're gonna have executives from those companies and I'll be doing a panel interview with them. And they're gonna talk about career pathways. They're gonna talk about um, how to grow within this industry, um, what kind of jobs are available. So it's gonna be really an interesting, engaging event. I encourage you all to jump on because you may be, um, I hope you've seen the just boom in the Arizona economy. And one of the reasons we're recovering so quickly is because of the boom in our economy when it comes to these crafts and trades and construction industries. And they are looking for talented people to be part of those. So hope you can join us for that event. And that is on March 24th. Then on, um, let's see, March 16th, we have um, a virtual uh, Tempe event coming up. And the Tempe event is for companies that reside in the city of Tempe. This is our third event uh, that we are doing and with them. And those are, these are all the companies that are going to be at that event. So Waste Management, Honor Health, Varsity Tuners, Amcor, Amazon. You guys, they are hiring from, we have some entry level, we have some executive level positions and a lot in between, a lot of the professional type of positions at this event. And so register for this one and you will get connected into an organization we're working with called Pipeline AZ. And Pipeline AZ will ask for your resume and start to actually connect you to jobs before the event and then during the event and then after the event. And so it's kind of like a four week program event, but one, one live event. And that is on March 16th, 9 to 11 a.m. where you will get to hear each of these companies speak. All right, I wanted to talk about the Vet Talks event on March 11th. This is, so we have a lot of events coming up in March as you guys can all see, one a week is what's happening. And so we are working with these companies that are, have a true care around veterans. Veterans, um, retired veterans, trailing spouses, people transitioning from the military into civilian life. And so all of these companies will be with us uh, and speaking at this event, we're going to do, um, there's some of them that'll be at the front end uh, calling Vet Talks where they have uh, playing off of TED Talks, they have like a five minute talk about um, veterans and um, the wh how they're supporting veterans at their organizations. And then we have another hour where um, companies get a couple minutes to talk about their company, their jobs, and uh, the support they have for veterans. And so lots of really great content. So if you're a veteran, if you know a veteran that you can get this information over to, um, or you are a trailing spouse of a veteran, uh, this is for you and we'd love to have you there. All right, if you would like a new headshot for your LinkedIn portfolio, um, come and see Gordon Murray at Flash Photo. He is doing a Phoenix tour and he is next stop is in Mar is March 4th in Litchfield Park. Then he'll be in Mesa, then Phoenix and Scottsdale, then Northwest Phoenix. So what he's doing for us is because we can't meet virtually right now, 
he is traveling around and doing basically COVID friendly photo shoots. So you can have a headshot and you just have to meet him where, um, where he is to get this shot. Um, they are no cost, but he does take donations if you would like, and he'll do a, f a full retouching professional photo um, at a low fee. But these are not cost based. It's because we cannot do live events right now where we always bring a photographer in. So he is doing this for us. And we've had multiple people have these done and say he does a fantastic job. So um, feel free to utilize that resource. You can also make sure you're getting our updates, if, um, which you should be by now if you're registered for an event, but, but careerconnectors.org is where we host all of the content and information. And so you can take a look at, we, we have content in three buckets. Our webinars are out there. I do some, um, I have some job tips out there with my career chats. And then we have some community updates, which we're having a new community update. I think it's next Wednesday. Um, and we'll be talking networking. And so that will go live on Facebook and then we'll post it in the community update as well. All right, thank you so much to all of our awesome volunteers. Um, there are a lot uh, that are on the line today that are supporting this. We have many that are um, coaches and that I'll be uh, talking about in just a minute. The Resume Writers Council has been a partner since we launched this thing uh, almost 11 years ago now. And um, so, when, when people are asking for a resume, when you're asking for resume advice, remember, you need to go to the professionals. And so these are the ones that know how to get through the applicant tracking system. If you are interested in volunteering, a big need we have right now are um, event recap writers, bloggers. And so if you would be interested in, you know, kind of writing um, these events as they're going, it's not word for word, but it's giving an idea of the content, so that we can post it out to people afterwards. Um, we would really appreciate that. So contact Sheila at careerconnectors.org and she would be happy to help you um, get started with us. All right, so also we are 501c3 and we greatly appreciate any donations that you guys um, would like to give back to our organization. It costs us $42 per person to run this event. And so thank you so much. If you're interested in donating now, or if you would like to donate after you land in your next great job, we would greatly appreciate it to keep us going and to serve, serve basically uh, pay it forward to other people. Uh, all right, so thank you guys so much. What we're gonna do now is we're getting ready to transition into our breakout time. And uh, Sheila Coulomb is gonna pop on here in just a minute. And she's gonna walk you through how to join different breakout rooms. And so we will have a list of many of them and you can choose which one you'd like to join. Thank you for being here today. Um, I'm thrilled that you were able to join us. I know some of you are having some tech issues um, and having to hop on and off. Um, we have been on the phone with Cox for hours and hours and hours and they keep telling us our neighborhood is at 98%. So I'm sure most neighborhoods are running about 98% capacity right now. And so I know Cox is having a hard time keeping up with the demand. And so um, that's why uh, I had dropped in some tips about um, how to keep connected and we'll include those in the blog as well. But wanted you all to know um, we are praying for you and we are praying that you land into the career of your dreams. Thanks for being here today. Okay, thanks, Jessica. All right, so now we'll transition from those presentations into our breakout room sessions. And I wanna let you know, we have um, not only most of our speakers who are here, and Loretta, I'm so sorry, I don't have your name here. Um,